Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. Today I wanted to share how you can grow pretty much anything in the air garden. Uh, it's one of the questions that I got asked the most, you know, are you locked into buying their seeds and what they have available? Um, or can you grow your own and is it cost effective? So today I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step the entire process, uh, what kind of plants work well in the air garden and basically everything you need to know about growing your own seeds. Uh, right now it's late summer, so it's the perfect time to get started on a fall garden. And plus with hydroponics, you can grow year round inside. So if you want to strictly um, grow indoors, then you can do that too. So let's get started. Um, the first thing is, you know, you need to have your own seeds and you need to buy the um, Air Garden Grow Anything Kit, which I have right here. I'll walk you through what's included in the kit. Um, but first I wanted to quickly talk about where you can get seeds. I ordered mine off of Baker's Creek. Um, this is the catalog. They come out with one every year. I flipped through this in one of my previous vlog videos. I will link it in the description if you're curious. Um, but for me, primarily, I wanted to grow cherry tomatoes and peppers. So I'm gonna show you um, how I do that today. I picked up the 25 pod kit, but they have all different sizes. Um, I believe like 30, 50, 60. Um, the larger the kit, obviously, the more cost-effective it is per pod. So here's what comes inside the Grow Anything seed kit. First, the plastic pods. These are perfectly sized to fit within the Aero Garden models. Um, but actually, if you're careful, you can reuse these between plantings. And then next are the dome caps. These are little plastic coverings that you just place on the top of the pods. And they help to trap some heat and humidity and basically create like a greenhouse effect for the little seedlings. And these you can definitely reuse. I made the mistake of throwing the dome caps away the first time I got the Aero Garden. So um, try to hold on to these. And then next, there's the grow sponges. So since we're not planting in soil, we do need something to hold the seeds. These are made from Canadian peat, I believe. They're kind of a loose and airy, spongy-like medium, and they ensure that the plants get both water and oxygen. Um, I've found that these aren't really reusable. They get pretty tangled up with roots, and um, typically I would replant uh, the, the sponge directly in soil. Um, if you're on a budget and you're looking for something a little cheaper, you can try using rock wool. I'll link some options in the description box. Um, rock wool is slightly more cost effective, but you do have to cut them down to size to fit the pods because they come in these like square cube looking things. Um, personally, I think the Air Garden Grow sponges are just easier to use straight out of the box and they look a little nicer. So um, they come in this kit too. So the Grow Anything kit includes some blank labels so that you can write down what each plant is. Um, they're not just decorative though, these cover up the surface area of the pod and they prevent algae from growing by blocking out some of that strong LED light. Uh, these are in sticker format, so they're really easy to use. Uh, no need to like iron them on or tape them down. Um, if you run out of these, maybe you could try using foil or if you have a Cricut or like one of those 3D printers, you could maybe try making your own stickers. Um, I like how easy these, these are to use. Um, they just keep everything looking very uniform. All right, so that is everything in the kit. Pretty straightforward. Now, here's how to grow whatever we want. I have here my seed packets. I'm gonna be planting directly from seed. Some people like to wait until they have seedlings. Um, it's just personal preference. On the back of each seed packet, there's always some helpful information. So for example, this one has how long it takes for the plant to sprout, um, the ideal temperature, how many hours of full sun they need, how deep to plant them, seed temperatures, frost hardiness, etc., etc. Since I'm personally going to be growing everything indoors, I don't really need to worry about timing frost dates or timing anything. Okay, so now I'm going to open up the seed packets and show you how to plant them in the air garden. It's really easy. First, we want to make sure to soak the grow sponges. Um, I experimented with this, and actually the sponges that were wet had a much faster rate of germination than the ones that I left dry. I had kind of thought that the air garden pump would wet the sponges on their own, and they do, the machine does do that, but the seeds seem to have an easier time if the grow sponge itself is like pretty wet and you know fully soaked through. Um, so I guess that makes sense too because if you were seed starting normally, you would use like a damp paper towel or something moist. So I guess we wanna mimic that same environment. All right, and some of these seeds are really tiny. If you have good finger dexterity, you can just use your hands. Um, obviously I had some trouble here, so I think it's a little easier if you dab your finger in water to help pick up the seed. And eventually I just gave up trying to grab them with my fingers and I used tweezers. I found that to be a lot easier. 
Um, you could also try maybe like a wet Q-tip or a paintbrush, something like that. And then just stick them in. Um, it's definitely hard to see once you've dropped them in, so try to like, you know, pay attention and make sure you're not like zoning out and forgetting. Okay, and then another common question is how many seeds to plant per pod? So usually people who are growing outdoors, they are on some kind of time crunch because they want to get the maximum yield in the spring and summer before it gets too cold. So they'll plant like three or four seeds per pod to increase the likelihood of germination. And then they'll pick one seedling and cut out the rest and, you know, either thin them out or try to gently separate them and um, place the other extra baby seedlings in, in soil or pods or whatever. I've actually done it both ways. For me, since I am growing indoors and there's no real time pressure, I like to just plant one seed per pod so I don't have to deal with the hassle of separating them out later um, because you do lose some seedlings that way. And I've also tried experimenting to see what the effect is from like multiple seeds per pod. And it definitely depends on the plant. For something like chives, I would put a couple seeds in because I had a really hard time growing those. But um, for example, here is some tennis ball lettuce that I planted. The pod on the left has just one plant, but the pod on the right has two. And I'm not sure if you can really tell on camera, but it's really obvious in person that the plant on the left, just the single seed pod, has a lot more room, it's a lot bigger, it's more lush looking, um, nicer, darker green. The one on the right, the two that are crammed in together, they are both a lot smaller and skinnier because they're kind of fighting for room. And I noticed they tend to kind of yellow and um, they just don't look as great. So it's up to you. Um, if you can, try to give them as much space as possible. Okay, so we're going to plant all the seeds in the grow sponge, place them in the pods, and then just prop them up vertically so that the seeds don't fall out. Um, they're so small that you might not notice if they fall out. And then it's time to label. So I found it helpful to do this in batches um, for each plant, and then that way it didn't mix up the labeling process. The labels are actually really easy to use. They're stickers, so you literally just write on them and peel them off and stick them on the pod. Um, I did have a hard time writing on them. I found regular pens did not work at all. I needed more of like a Sharpie or gel type pen, uh, but then my fingers kept smudging the ink and by the end of it, most of my labels weren't legible. So uh, if you have a better like tool, let me, let me know what you recommend. Um, and then when you stick them on the pod, if you can try to line them up nicely with the plastic perimeter. I found out later on that if I did a bad job sticking the label, um, it affected how snug like the clear dome cap sat on the pods. It's not a big deal either way, just if you can try to stick it on nicely. Okay, and that's basically it. It was super easy, right? Now we just have to set up the Aero Garden. I'm using the Farm XL. Because this model is pretty large, I find it helpful to fill the reservoir up with water first. I think you can hold like over a gallon of water, so you definitely need to refill that a couple times. Uh, not too bad the first time you're doing it though. And then um, try to use distilled water if you can. It will uh, help your plants out more than if you're using tap water. Then just place the pods in. Um, since I'm growing tomatoes and peppers, they do need a lot of space. Full grown cherry tomato plants need at least three to four pod spaces, um, while peppers need like at least two to three spaces. So since this is the very beginning, if you want, you can plant you know, all the spaces and then just take out some plants later. I'm actually going to fill up all 12 slots uh, with some lettuces um, because I know that lettuce will be done in about a month and then I can take it out before the tomatoes and peppers need the room. But if you don't want to bother, you definitely just want to make sure that you cover the empty slots. Um, Aero Garden sells these black spacers that perfectly fit the holes and they look really nice and sleek and that will prevent any algae from growing and messing up the tank. Um, I've also heard that golf balls work really well. I have some tennis balls lying around, so I used that at first until I realized that dogs think tennis balls are toys. So then I switched to using Nespresso pods. These happen to fit perfectly, and I actually think these look the best. So um, if you have an espresso machine and you have pods lying around, try that. Um, yeah, I think they look pretty nice and subtle. And then I programmed the machine, and that was it really easy to start and use. Let me know if you um, have ever grown anything in the air garden and what you recommend. I'm always looking for new plants and uh, veggies to try out.